That was uh, March 11th of 19, uh, 2011. There was a big earthquake, and it was Richter scale 9.0. That was, uh, can you imagine, 9.0 shaking? Like, uh, I wouldn't be able to stand up here right now. It's like, you know, and uh, everything was falling down, uh, shaking, and uh, followed by a huge tsunami. As a result, uh, many buildings were just swept like this. And uh, Fukushima Prefecture is one of the uh, prefectures that holds uh, multiple nuclear reactors. To be honest with you, uh, March 11th, over here in the US, when I heard this news, oh my god, the most surprising news for me at that time was not the uh, earthquake nor tsunami, but the fact that Japan had 54 nuclear reactors. I had no knowledge on that. I thought maybe at most three or four, but when I heard 54, what the heck? I mean, I have no idea why and how so many reactors were built without ordinary people's knowledge. And this is the picture. This is a uh, picture of uh, Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plants, which holds four nuclear reactors in this close proximity and so close to this ocean, right? And uh, uh, this is the picture before March 11th. So this is the picture after March 11th. Everything was so completely out of shape. And let, let us give you a little closer uh, picture. So this one shows uh, reactor number three and reactor number four. So it says the effects of a uh, prolonged station blackout caused by 9.0 earthquake and 46 foot tall tsunami are catastrophic. Um, it was officially announced that it was 46 foot tall and uh, currently it is a little bit controversial. Some specialists say that maybe it was not that tall. It was much shorter but it was important for uh, Tokyo Electric Company to make the tsunami was the main cause of all catastrophic. But probably reality was actually the earthquake who caused the original damage to the uh, uh, reactors, but it is not scientifically proven yet, but you know, still everything was under investigation. So in this case, I would like to show you the issue uh, focusing on thyroids. Thyroid cancer. Thyroid is right here, right? And it is usually the uh, disease that happens to uh, older people. So it is extremely rare for children to develop thyroid cancer. For, uh, however, if you calculated the uh, uh, ratio, it seems like right now in Fukushima area, uh, the younger, very young children are developing thyroid cancer, uh, which is 150 times higher, 150 times higher uh, than the normal uh, case. So this is something we should uh, highlight. And also because of this radiation, uh, children in the affected area are suffering many, many other uh, health hazards. Uh, please take a look at the next slide. Here's a chart of actual threat to health of people posed by radiation-contaminated environment. Radiation attacks growing cells. That's why children and the babies are, and also fetus are really in danger. Therefore, especially pregnant women, children, babies, and the fetus are under high risk of these symptoms. For example, it's called uh, anemia and dizziness and regularly happening, and uh, they also have a constant headaches, nose bleeding, uh, thyroid abnormality, and poor growth, pneumonia, slow recover from cold, inflammation of lymphatic nerves, liver pain, pain, joint pain such as back of knees and elbows, and lack of concentration at schoolwork or just regular uh, daily activities, and the hair loss and no growth. Uh, low vision, Vis uh, vision is getting weak and they repeatedly suffer from uh, otitis media and asthma, chest pain, heart pain, stomach pain, poor appetite, and skin trouble, and slow healing of wounds, and easily get tired. And if, I like, if you see this uh, symptom, it is very, very similar to what happened 
to um, atomic bomb survivors of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. As a matter of fact, uh, Hidankyo, which is the uh, organization uh, constituted with uh, survivors of uh, atomic bombs, they suggested to Japanese government to issue health, uh, health card, should I say, health proof uh, card, so that uh, uh, once you obtain this card, you are supposed to uh, get the free medical treatments. This was done immediately, like May uh, of uh, 2011, but such uh, uh, political decisions has not been made yet. Let's go next. So this is the picture of a, a young girl who is getting the uh, uh, checkup of thyroid cancer. Uh, it is like, a, 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 well, after one year of uh, March 11th earthquake, thyroid abnormality of local children was like 40%. 40% of local children had some kind of thyroid abnormality which is four to five times faster than what happened in Chernobyl's, uh, children in Chernobyl. Because uh, when the children in Chernobyl, when they reached the 40% thyroid abnormality, that was after five years of the incident. So Fukushima's speed is much, much fast, faster than uh, Chernobyl's case. So this is a, also a continuation of health issues, causes of the infant death in Fukushima. Infant death is increasing steadily. And this is a comparison of the year 2010 and year 2011. After the um, uh, death, you can see that the, uh, the, the, the cause of death in, uh, in terms of cancer, leukemia, is increased significantly. And when it comes to heart disease, this is almost doubled. Okay, and the uh, infection uh, got also increased and pneumonia, uh, uh, increase. And others remain the same, but this is also an uh, interesting uh, fact that the uh, heart disease and uh, cancer, leukemia, and infection is increasing. Uh, radiation attacks the growing cells, I said before, and also especially the, uh, the, the muscles of the heart will be very much weakened, and also the immune system will be very much weakened. So it already shows the effect of radiation, isn't it important? Uh, I think it's important to uh, share this information here. And because of this, not being taken care of adequately, mothers in Japan got very frightened. So they got together like this and uh, came to a, a, a class action. Uh, these mothers are actually uh, mothers in Kita Kyushu. Northern Kyushu area. Why are they got together? Kita Kyushu is much southern island of Japan, far, far, far away from Fukushima. The why those mothers are so much uh, active in this way? The reason why they got together uh, in this case is they are protesting burning rubbles. Okay, there's a plan to bring radioactive rubbles from Fukushima all the way <laughs> south to Kyushu Island. Physically, they have to uh, transport by trucks after trucks after trucks, going through regular roads, spreading radioactive particles all over, then burn again in Kita Kyushu, which is ridiculous, I think. But having learned the health effects of radiation, concerned citizens, especially mothers, protested against the transporting and the burning uh, Fukushima's rubble in incineration facilities all over Japan. This photo is one of such demonstrations held in Kita Kyushu city in southern island of Japan. Let me show you something else. Uh, let's go on to the uh, next map. So here's the map of the plan to burn um, rubble from Fukushima all over Japan like this. Why are they doing this? Despite the strong resistance by local citizens, radioactive rubbles have been transported all over Japan and burned. Thus, concentration has been, and uh, thus contamination has been spreading even the areas where they could grow non-contaminated food. Many government contractors made a huge profit from this project. Also, each prefecture government made 100 million yen commission by accepting rubbles in their prefecture's incinerating facilities. 
Poorly managed ashes could cause secondary contamination of irrigation water, which could lead to food contamination from soil. Thus, 19 trillion yen, which is about $190 billion recovery budget, later increased to 25 trillion yen, which is about $25 billion, was widely spread all over Japan, not much spent in affected areas. Notoriously, the word recovery was widely interpreted and allocated to almost not related projects. What we intake to our body is very much concerned to anybody. Here's a comparison of an international standard and a Japanese standard, temporary standard, I should say, after uh, uh, March 11th. The blue one is uh, international standard. Uh, the very on top is the USA's standard by law. Then German Association of the Gas and Water, 0.5. Ukraine standard of cesium-137 is only two becquerels. WHO standard of iodine-131 is 10 becquerels. WHO standard of cesium-137 is also up to 10 becquerels. Belarus standard is also 10 becquerels. And uh, in, in iodine-131, 40 becquerels and cesium-137 is 90 Becquerels. That is only the limit. Up to this much was, I wouldn't say safe, but still acceptable. That's the international standard. Then, after uh, March 11, Japanese standard, which used to be only up to one becquerel, suddenly okay, even for infants, to intake 100 becquerels. And uh, when it comes to cesium-137, it's 200 becquerels. And iodine 131 was up to 300 becquerels. Everybody flipped over. And uh, at the lower part is the uh, standard food uh, level, uh, becquerel. In, in case of Belarus, uh, children is okay to eat up to 37 becquerels per kilogram. Uh, in case of uh, Ukraine, in, uh, uh, when they uh, eat vegetables, they can uh, take up to 40 becquerels per kilogram. And the Belarus was 100 becquerels. Codex, this is a kind of organization related to United Nations. Uh, I, uh, is everybody familiar with uh, FAO? Yes. That's it. FAO and WHO got together in 1962. They made a, another, another affiliated organization of Codex, which deals with the food security of, uh, globally. And the Codex standard is um, 100 becquerels. And the US standard by law is 170 becquerels. And Japanese standard for import goods, so not producing from Japan, but from outside Japan, they can import up to 137 becquerels. Next one, Japanese temporary standard of vegetable is, in case of cesium-137, is 500 becquerels, and iodine-131 is 2,000 becquerels, and uh, mothers get furious. So this uh, uh, rate was much uh, reduced down to 100 becquerels right now. By the way, everyone, do you know the uh, highest limit of uh, imported food uh, radiation level of this country? 1,200 becquerels. United States can import radioactive um, contaminated food up to 1,200 becquerels. Let's go on to the next slide. So the, this is the comparison of the food before and after March 11. Uh, blue one was the before March 11. This is based on the research uh, done by Science and Technology Agency in 1997. In Japan, uh, the rice is very important, and they used to eat at most, at most highest 0.02 becquerel per kilogram. Uh, daikon radish was up to 0.26, uh, leafy vegetable 0.69, milk 0.02, fish 0.24, uh, tea 0.32, and uh, regular water 0.06, and other regular food uh, totally 0.07. For, uh, for. However, after March 11th, it was almost uh, very difficult to keep uh, radiation level down, so they conveniently increased the uh, allowable uh, amount of uh, uh, becquerel. Uh, when it comes to rice, 100 becquerels. Daikon radish, 100 becquerels. Leafy vegetable, 100 becquerels. Milk, 50 becquerels. 
fish 100 back rolls, tea 100 back rolls, uh, drinking water 10 back rolls. And when it comes to food, you never know. When you go outside and eat any food at fast food restaurants or regular restaurants, you don't know what kind of material you are eating because I heard a story that the fish very close to Fukushima, uh, a shore side, some incredibly high back roll were measured, like 18,000 back rolls. Can you imagine? It's, uh, now it's getting much higher and higher on, on a daily basis whenever I uh, open up the news. So it's really scary. And I hope that kind of fish doesn't uh, come into the market. But uh, I've seen a picture of deformed fish and some stories that, oh, they can they cut it up and you never know what kind of fish they serve. So um, it's a very obscure area. When it comes to tea, I did a personal research on this. Uh, I found a tea importer uh, based in California. I sent an email. Are you sure about the back roll amount of your tea you are importing from Japan? And he said, yes, and I'm more than happy to show you our record. So he sent me uh, as an attached PDF uh, uh, document about the back roll amount of the tea that he's been importing. And it says ND, which means not detected. But there's an actual number there, like a 20 or 40 or 50. But because it's under 100, they were allowed to label as ND. But think about it. Before 311, even one back row was a maximum allow allowed amount. Now it's up, up to 100. So even 40 and 50 is acceptable? No, thank you. <laughs> So here I would like to show and share with you some social issues. Uh, I think uh, in this matter, uh, uh, Ms. Hitomi will uh, give us some much more details from her personal experience. But anyway, uh, broken families and loss of cultural traditions. Uh, let me give you some explanation. Uh, because of this food situation, especially uh, mothers with young, ch young children in affected area, very, very nervous about daily food preparation. So they try to uh, purchase uh, vegetables and fruits and anything that are produced outside of uh, affected area. It's more expensive because of the logistic cost, but it's healthier. So they cook uh, for children using those materials, but for elderly people, um, they cook local material. So quite often elderly people who do not have any good access to social network, they only uh, watch and read whatever available in the mainstream media who only uh, uh, convey the uh, kind of governmental uh, propaganda type of news. Uh, they don't understand why uh, their young mothers are preparing separate meal from them. So they often complain, why can't you, uh, our grandchildren eat the same food as we eat, you know? under the same roof. This is a huge, you know, uh, issue. And uh, if they were uh, financially um, capable or if they have any relatives who live in a far away, whatever the uh, situation allows, those who can relocate, they already did relocate. But because of the, uh, uh, their father's job, most likely uh, only mothers and the children go outside the affected area and the fathers, husbands remain locally and keep working, provide uh, uh, you know, income. So in this way, naturally, they, uh, uh, the, the same income will be split into half. It's really uh, causing a financial uh, difficulty. And also emotional distance gets far uh, when it comes to uh, this kind of situation. So the, the term like Fukushima divorce uh, prevailed. There's so many divorce cases happening after this uh, 311. Uh, and also, when it comes to schools in local uh, affected area, teachers are not helping children. This is a very upsetting uh, fact. For example, in case of Fukushima Prefecture, uh, for a local school meal, they provide with materials up to, uh, with radiation up to 20 uh, 20 back rolls. That's the government uh, regulation. For your, but in Fukushima Prefecture's government um, cafeteria, they serve up to they serve up to 10 back rolls. So school children are eating a higher level of radi radioactive food than uh, uh, grown-ups who are working at uh, Fukushima Prefecture government. Uh, 
Anyway, so uh, mothers are very much concerned there uh, about uh, their children's uh, food intake. They prepared many of them prepared uh, homemade uh, lunch and have them uh, have their children bring to school. And uh, then school teachers say, "Oh, you must eat school lunch. Forget about your homemade lunch." Can't you eat the same food with other people? This is kind of emotional, uh, psychological pressure uh, put from uh, local teachers to their students. So that's what's ha happening in the uh, educational setting in affected area. And also, once you go out of the affected area, people say they cannot mention that they are from Fukushima or they are victims of uh, this big uh, natural disaster because most likely they are target, they become target of discrimination. Oh, don't come near me, you are radioactive. That sort of uh, uh, reaction would come. So uh, it is psychologically very, very difficult. Either whether stay in affected area or going outside of the affected area. And because of the uh, the community, local community will be spread all over Japan. The, 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 the sense of uh, tie will be lost. So this is the kind of social issues that local people share. And now let's wait for uh, Ms. Um, Hitomi's um, PowerPoint presentation later, so I think he, she can explain to us a lot more than I did. Next is, let's go on to labor issue. Labor force issues, uh, radiation level at the nuclear power plants and workers' condition. Well, I think about this one, uh, many people heard from U.S. media how uh, difficult to recruit uh, workers at the Fukushima Daiichi. And um, over there, workers are exposed to extremely high level of radiation on a daily basis. Their uh, rotational rate is getting higher. For example, in two or three months, if they keep working, they can be considered as an expert. The labor force shortage has been further uh, exacerbated since, this, since last summer. A uh, little bit more details. Uh, not only Fukushima uh, uh, power plants laborers, but also traditionally, Japanese labor force is layers of layers of layers of em employment. So on, on, the, on the very on top, there's a TEPCO, Tokyo Electric Company. They hire some uh, affiliated company, which deals with another several different companies. And they hire another several different companies. This layers of seven or eight layers. So at the very bottom, once you get the job from the very bottom uh, uh, employment agency, your salary is very scarce. You don't have any health uh, benefit. And uh, uh, sometimes I heard the story of uh, forced to take off the radiation measurement so that you don't know how high you are exposed to. Okay? It's almost like a disposable lives over there. So the death rate is high, I heard, uh, but uh, official rate is a lot lower. So we have to figure out and uh, pay uh, closer attention to social network, media, and whatever the information we could obtain. So this is the uh, picture that was widely spread in a social network once last year. Uh, this guy is standing in front of a surveillance camera and trying to send some kind of message. And he is supposed to be a supposedly whistleblower. And he uh, later uh, wrote the how uh, significantly uh, deteriorating their working condition has been uh, on the internet. So uh, this is the uh, kind of a, a summarizing of the uh, labor issue. So the, again, uh, the wages are not efficient because of these multiple layers are scalping off the uh, profit from uh, actual uh, laborers. And um, uh, again, uh, the recruitment was outsourced. So TEPCO uh, denies the whole of their uh, responsibility of these labor issues and the uh, lack of health, uh, proper health insurance and limited working hours, high turnover rate of workers because of the radiation. If you hit a certain maximum allowed um, uh, allowance of the radiation, you are legally not able to go into the site and work. And the shortage of experience to workers. Here's another interesting story. Um, 
couple of years ago, uh, we hosted some event here, and uh, there was a, a representative of uh, senior uh, retirees of TEPCO. Uh, they formed the group, and they said, oh, we know about nuclear sites, and we are uh, more technically capable, and also we are too old to get sick anymore, so why don't we go in, please let us go inside and work, and TEPCO denied it. And Japanese government denied it also. So there are skillful people available, willing to work in the site, but they're not using it. Uh, you heard of a uh, water uh, con uh, tank has been leaking. The contaminated wor uh, water has been stored in the tanks like this, and uh, everybody is com complaining why it's leaking. Well, first of all, th those. Uh, metal tanks are not welded. They're, they're quickly made, so they're just, uh, uh, how do you say, uh, uh, put together with the uh, bolts and knots and things. Uh, that's also number one reason. And secondly, it was uh, placed in a slanted surface. So therefore, when the water got more, uh, of course, there's a, a gravity in the, uh, on the earth, so the, the water kept uh, leaking. It's been such a huge issue. And uh, this leaked water is now spilling into the uh, ocean, uh, Pacific Ocean. Uh, let's go next one. So in order to do something about this leaking uh, problems, uh, they are trying to come up with a lot of different methods, like uh, let's use ice sealed walls into the ground and things like that. But I think this idea is no longer uh, adequate because recently they say that, uh, well, in the lower, can you see the lower uh, design, uh, the, uh, the drawings? They say, they show the uh, bottom, uh, how do you say, uh, the floor of the reactors, but supposedly they are already melted through. So the, the radiation, very high uh, radiation going through the ground, going to the, uh, I think it's already touching the uh, uh, underground water. So the high, extremely high radiation is naturally going through the ocean day by day. So this is the article from the Kyoto uh, News uh, issue. Fukushima plant leaking 60 billion becquerels of radiation a day, and this is getting even worse day by day. So this is the uh, picture of number four reactor. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, they, they had a, a, a spent fuel pool, almost like a hanging in the uh, uh, on the ceiling and the, you know, the, the, the very top cover blown up and uh, this is completely uh, exposed to the air. Uh, but this ventral is very, very critical. Uh, let me tell you something about uh, Ar what uh, Arnie Gunderson said. Arnie Gunderson severely criticized the animated uh, uh, simulation made by TEPCO. Uh, the second picture is the animation. Uh, this is the, uh, the one I picked from the animation made by TEPCO. Uh, as per Arnie Gunderson, TEPCO does not have technical, uh, technical expertise to deal with this serious issue. There are debris to be removed before spent fuel rods, which was already finished by now, uh, which could go wrong. Well, luckily it didn't go wrong, I guess. The building structure was severely damaged. It's uh, damaged as much as they had to build a new surrounding building in order to hold two cranes. So uh, in the animation, they can see the great part. There's a new structure uh, uh, built surrounding this number four reactor. And somehow they had to cover it so that we don't know what's going on inside from outside. In case of accident, the radiation needs to be vented. Even the new building can persist against any new big earthquakes. The old one inside is tend to collapse and lead to catastrophic accident by exposing fuel rods to the air. They do not have any place to store them once they successfully removed spent fuel rods. The salt water contaminated fuel rods should not be placed together with pre previously stored ones. Decommissioning number four is not necessary. Is not necessary after removing spent fuel. Such money should be spent for removing fuel from number one through number three reactors, as per Arnie Gunderson. But currently, they are working on uh, removing uh, spent fuel rods. Spent fuel is the uh, product after using uh, taking out energy from uranium. 
which is much high, uh, highly radioactive than the original shape. So this kind of spectral altogether, uh, as I explained in an earlier slide, uh, if something happens, that will lead to globally catastrophic situation. That's why we have to pay very keen attention to what's going on on this uh, with this number four reactor. So this is the map of evacuation zone. Uh, the, the, the cross mark is the Fukushima Daiichi area, and you see the, uh, the red marked area is decided by government, difficult to return zones. So people who live in this area had to evacuate, mandatory. Uh, look at this, that's the Fukushima, uh, the, by, by the water is Fukushima nuclear power plant, and this red, uh, red area goes kind of a northwest part of Japan. Why it spread like this? Because there was a big wind. Uh, at the time of uh, original uh, accident, the wind was blowing toward the ocean. And after that, it's changed to north, northwest part of the, uh, Japan. So the people who originally evacuated toward that area got actually uh, exposed to very high radiation afterwards. This could have been prevented, I think, and many people uh, argue about this, but I, uh, let's see how it goes politically uh, resolved or not. Let's go on to the next one. So those who evacuated originally stayed in, uh, I, this is a school, gymnasium. That was the uh, place where a local government provided with for evacuees. Uh, this is, as you can see, that they're just, you know, blocking uh, individual households by cardboard boxes like this. And then later on, they separated with just, you know, bars and curtains. That was a very, very temporary situation. They had to stay for a while, while the government finished, finished uh, building uh, uh, temporary housing. So next is the uh, pictures of temporary housings. Doesn't it remind you something? When I saw these pictures, uh, it, what, the first thing that came through my mind was, oh, this is like a concentration camp of Japanese residents uh, in California. It, it was really looked like it, and the, the inside was really like that. It's only one uh, room with six tatami mats. This is the uh, multiple purpose room where they sleep, they eat, they study, they uh, lounge, you know, only six tatami room space. That's the only space. And the outside they have a small kitchenette and bathroom. That's it. So people are forced to stay here for last how many years? There are still people living there. And the recently, this is a very surprising news, that the government affiliated agency uh, sent out official letters to residents of these uh, temporary housings. They said, well, our support is running out. You have to get out of here by March of this year. If you would like to keep living there, you have to start paying rent. And the next one, let's go on to the, uh, how are children living in that kind of situation? Look at this blue covered thing. This is a contaminated water, I mean, I'm sorry, contaminated soil, but if they scrape up contaminated soil, put it away, but if they put the way right behind the house and the children are playing, I think they are exposed to very strong radiation. So this is not healthy environment, no matter what. Uh, I heard the st story that the, some uh, contaminated, uh, removed soil, contaminated soil are placed under the play park or or somewhere in the school uh, ground, things like that. I think Ms. Ms. Hitomi will tell us more details about this one. So political issues, mm -hmm. whether economy or human rights. I told you at the, at the beginning that the economy was placed at the very first priority. And uh, the mounting cost of decontamination is far more expensive than relocating local, local residents. But why they are not doing so? I think I already told you the answer at the beginning. Decontamination is a business opportunity, never ending business opportunity. And the government has not agreed to relocate even only children 
you know. During the World War, when Japan is getting uh, more and more uh, kind of a carpet, um, how do you say it, carpet bombing, uh, they had children relocated all spread in different areas of Japan to protect them. And I think this is much severer uh, situation than that, but still they forced the children to stay in local area. Right now, 20 millisievert is mostly okay, but used, used to be 20, so, uh, 20 millisievert used to be the maximum uh, amount of radiation for uh, nuclear power plant laborer. But now they are forcing children to stay in that environment without any protection. So, why the Japanese government is refusing or not interested in relocating even only children? This is very interesting, I think. That at the center is TEPCO, Tokyo Electric Company. Okay? This one is playing a very, very crucial role in Japanese economy, Japanese political arena, in Japanese media. For example, let's go on to journal journalists and media. They have a sponsors, and Tedco is a very big sponsor. And who wants to go against their sponsors, right? And NHK, NHK is like a, 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 a PBS, Japanese version of PBS. Uh, but NHK is very much uh, funded by the government and also local uh, citizens are supposed to pay, uh, how do you say, subscription fee monthly. Anyway, the NHK's uh, employees' uh, retirement funds are heavily uh, invested with TEPCO's uh, share. And uh, next to NHK is Tokyo University, it's like a Harvard of Japan. Uh, gets like a huge amount of uh, donation from TEPCO. Uh, TEPCO. Uh, MITI MITI, which is Ministry of, Inter Ministry of International Trade and Industry. This is a government entity and uh, uh, within its affiliates they have NISA, N-I-S-A, which is the Nuclear and Industrial Safety Agency which is a kind of regulator of nuclear industry, but they used to hire people from TEPCO to a member of NISA. And the uh, uh, people of METI uh, used to get a nice position after their retirement at TEPCO. So this is a nice picture of a revolving door. And this uh, situation was heavily criticized in Japan, so they uh, changed to uh, Stop uh, abolish NISA. Right now, it is uh, NRA Ministry. NRA is a, a national radiation by a social radiation agency, uh, which is now under the Ministry of Environment Environment since September 2012. Then uh, you see the Toshiba. Toshiba is a, a Japanese electric uh, maker, which also makes reactors. So. For Toshiba, Tenko is a very big client, and uh, Supreme Court of Judge would say nuclear power is safe because why? They can get a nice position in Toshiba later on, right? So it's a kind of a, a chain reaction of um, ramification. And when it comes to police department, they can get a nice job after their retirement at Tenko. Right? So when it comes to anti-nuclear uh, demonstration and a rally, uh, police can go there and severely, uh, how do you say, use their uh, authority power against those uh, local people who are peacefully demonstrating. Next one, uh, Democratic Party of Japan uh, has been getting lots of donation, uh, political, political uh, donation from uh, TEPCO. And current Japanese government, government uh, also Liberal Democratic Party, also get uh, lots of uh, donation, uh, especially in in, in times of um, uh, election, national election, local election. Uh, so they are willing to say, okay, when TEPCO wants, oh, I would like to uh, increase the uh, electric fee. So. TEPCO has a kind of a free, a free, how do you say, free will. If they want more income, yes, they can do that, just to raise electricity. So who's paying all this? Japanese consumers. 
they're paying very, very expensive electricity to TEPCO. Also, it's a part of the media, I would say, a nuclear, uh, I'm sorry, uh, nuclear experts who are going to uh, places and doing lectures and things like that, uh, they can uh, be uh, bought by TEPCO with a very high uh, fee and say uh, they can do uh, talk about how safe nuclear uh, reactors are, you know, nuclear energy is very important for Japan, it is necessary, blah blah blah, and get a lot of high fee. It's almost impossible to move Japanese government or TEPCO, but we have to do about this situation. So, therefore, here we are, coalition of NGOs. Strategy in global perspective. The nuclear syndicate is blocking people in Japan from restoring human rights. A strong global coalition is imperative. International NGOs, Human Rights Now work to invite the UN Human Rights Rapporteur, Dr. Uh, Anne Grover, to Japan last November. So he was the representing Human Rights, uh, UN Human Rights Committee, and uh, went to Japan last November and stayed there good for two weeks. Uh, he interviewed local people, he actually visited local areas and came to the conclusion that this is outrageous. So this is a comparison of uh, uh, before March 11th, yeah, before March 11th, and also uh, the standard that set by Japanese government after March 11th, and uh, Chernobyl concept that I explained earlier to, uh, today in the uh, slide. So before March 11th, radiation level, one millisiever a year was a maximum allowed Amount. And the Japanese government now said, no, it's up to 20 millisiever a year. Now it's okay. So children can stay there, play, uh, play outside. Whereas after Chernobyl, they said, no, 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 5 millisiever a year. This is the very maximum. So above 5 millisiever a year, you have to evacuate. That's the Chernobyl concept. So in case of Chernobyl, there were the people who were in the 5 millisiever area. They were, uh, they had to evacuate mandatory, right? And they get the medical support, uh, compensation, uh, also no contaminated food for affected people. And also, uh, the people who used to live in one millisiever, uh, in, in the level between one millisiever and a five millisiever, those people were given the choice whether they wanted to evacuate or if they wanted to stay, they could stay. And those who evacuated, cho chose to evacuate, they were also uh, able to obtain a similar support from the government. And those who stayed locally, they could also get the uh, support from, local, uh, from the government. Uh, free medical, free uh, non-contaminated food and whatsoever. In Japan, they have nothing. They have to pay extra fee and purchase very expensive, non-contaminated food from outside affected area. So, and also uh, the, the medical checkup and everything, no change. So let's go on to the next one. This is the comparison between two UN reports. This is very important, I think, ladies and gentlemen. Before I told you that there was a, a special uh, reporter of um, uh, human, UN Human Rights Committee was sent to Japan, uh, Mr. Grover went to Japan physically and stayed there good two weeks, observed local people, local area. And there's another uh, report came out of the UN Scientific Committee. UN Scientific Committee did not send anybody to Japan. They received information from uh, Fukushima Prefecture and the Japanese government. Based on that, they came up with certain uh, results last year, which was very much on the same line as Japanese government. This is scientific committee. If I were a doctor, I would not prescribe any medication without actually examining my patients. How scientific could it be? Without going to Japan, without seeing local people, without uh, seeing the uh, affected area, how can you get certain resolution? I don't know. Anyway, so there's a big uh, difference between two uh, different entities under the umbrella of United Nations. We have very opposing two different uh, results 
I think this is very uh, something we have to keep in our mind. This is the pictures of local children who can no longer play outside. But parents, they don't have a choice that they cannot go outside affected areas. So they put together and created a playground indoor, indoor playground. They've done everything they could do. There's also a special group of uh, uh, fathers who uh, runs the uh, kind of a day trip uh, operation of affected area. They uh, go to uh, outside and then measure the uh, uh, radiation all over and then make sure this is okay, it's safe enough. So they will go back to uh, their local area, bring us uh, uh, tens or twenties of children in a big uh, bus or van and bring to outdoor and let them play and, and bring them back to uh, local area. This kind of a local effort is very, very, um, how do you say, Kind of because because government doesn't do anything, instead the local people's efforts are flourishing. And here we have a, a wonderful a group of ladies who are also uh, actively actively working in order to improve their life in uh, in Japan and those uh, affected area. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, please uh, wait for it. Looking forward to their presentation. And let me uh, finish up a little bit more, a few more slides before we go on to Ms. Hitomi's presentation. Uh, this is the information that I obtained from NHK. As you see in this slide, the irradiated iodine 131 in seawater is increasing exp exponentially. In, after the 311 uh, accidents, in 26 days, it mounted to 1850.5 times more. So you can see how, uh, 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 how do you say, the pollution of ocean is quickly uh, spreading. Please go on to the next slide. This is the picture of the ocean. Radioactive seawater impact map, that's what it is. And you can see the dif uh, drifting flow of the high concentration of radiation. I can see that. And uh, there's no such a thing like a national border in ocean. So if you see the next slide, you can see how it goes. So this is the currents in Pacific Ocean area. Uh, I heard the news that uh, Alaska and uh, West Coast California, they were getting uh, lots of uh, rubbles uh, floating from Fukushima. So if the visible things are floating in that way, yes, of course, radiation are uh, going the same uh, current, going on the same current, going all over. So that's why uh, people in the West Coast are very, very much concerned about this uh, situation. And I also really, really feel sorry for those indigenous people in Alaska who is heavily depending on uh, horticulture. They fish uh, salmon, they uh, pick berries in uh, wild nature, and if they get affected by this current, uh, radioactive current, eventually they have nothing to eat. And uh, eventually this local current will go on to global current. See, the ocean is actually connected all over the world. So this is no longer Fukushima issue. This is no longer Japanese issue. This is global issue that we all got together. We all should get together and think about it, do something. So, what is going on now in Fukushima? Ladies and gentlemen, here is Ms. Hitomi, uh, Yayoi Hitomi, who is going to tell us about her uh, story uh, living in Fukushima. She still resides in Fukushima, working very hard for local people, and she has uh, important messages to share for us.